but by abiding by my own tips I've actually smashed through the 50 miles per gallon barrier. Hello guys and welcome back to the Volks Wizard channel. Now as you probably know the cost of fuel is currently at a record high which means motoring today costs a lot more than it did just a few weeks ago but amongst all this doom and gloom there is some good news because there are some simple things you can do to make your motoring a lot more efficient and they don't cost any money or take an awful lot of time. So in today's video I'm going to share with you my 10 top tips for driving more efficiently but before we get on to that Thanks to everybody who has subscribed to the channel. We're just under 40,000 subs right now. It'd be great to get to 40,000 very soon. So if you haven't subscribed, please do, and please click the bell notification while you're at it so you get instant updates when a video goes live because there's lots of great content coming up over the next few weeks. I haven't really posted much recently, but that's all going to change very soon. Right, let's get back onto then my 10 top tips for more efficient driving, starting with number 10. Okay, number 10 is a little bit complicated, so bear with me. In your typical engine, there are many, many moving parts and nearly all of them are coated in oil. How much friction that oil creates affects how much energy is needed to move those parts inside the engine. And bearing in mind, they move many thousands of times per minute. It has a significant effect on the efficiency of the engine overall. Now, over the last 20 years, manufacturers have really had to reduce their CO2 emissions. And to do that, they've used more and more advanced oils that create less internal friction. And CO2 emissions do directly relate to how much fuel the engine uses. So in the Mark V era, you'd have been pretty okay with a 5W40 synthetic oil. Mark 7, 7.5, a 530 synthetic oil and for the Mark 8, we've now moved to this 0W30. So my top tip number 10 is to make sure you use the most efficient, most modern oil in your car that you can do. Yeah, they do cost more if they go this way, but it's not an awful lot of difference, and I'm pretty sure you'll recoup that over the 10,000 miles or so you have it in your engine, particularly with fuel at the price it's at now. At number nine, my tip is to remove any unnecessary items from the boot. For example, a Corrado headlight. A carriage clock that doesn't work. Also, if this suits you, consider removing the spare wheel. I say if it suits you because if you could get stranded somewhere, with a puncture and it would cause you a lot of problems, say in the Scottish Highlands for example, then you should have your spare wheel. But if you've got a full size spare wheel, it is very, very heavy and you might want to consider just taking it out, take a bit more care with your tyres and I'm sure you'll save a lot of fuel doing that. Obviously Volkswagen have already done that for me with the Mark 8, so I'll just pretend to have a spare wheel and take it out. Okay, tip number seven is to keep your car nice and clean because clean paintwork is smooth paintwork and it goes through the air with less drag, which uses less fuel. Obviously, it wouldn't make sense to drive a few miles to your local hand car wash and use fuel doing so, but if you can do it at home for not a lot of cost, makes your car look good and you save fuel. Win-win. Now I'm yet to fulfill my special purpose, so I've never really had a need for roof bars and roof boxes, but if you have, then tip number seven is for you. And that's to make sure you remove your roof bars and roof boxes when you don't need to use them because they have a massive effect on the amount of drag the car will produce and therefore the amount of fuel it will consume. Now I know there's a bit of a fashion thing going on where people fit roof boxes to cars and yes that can look very cool but if you live in a country where the fuel is manufactured from Russian oil by fitting the roof box to your car and using more fuel you're putting more money in Putin's war chest and that most definitely is not cool. Okay tip number six is to fit smaller wheels and tyres to your car. Now I've done that 
to my Mark 8 Golf GTI Club Sport recently, I took off the 19s with 235 wide tyres. I fitted back the original 18s with 225 wide tyres. I think that's roughly a 5% difference in width. I'd say it's at least a 5% improvement in fuel efficiency with a smaller tyre on it. Obviously it doesn't make sense to go out and buy smaller wheels and tyres, but say for example you've got some smaller winter wheels you only ever use during the winter and you need to buy some new tyres either for them or for the normal wheels, why not just go and buy some new tyres and fit them to the smaller winter wheels and therefore you'll get the efficiency that way. And if you buy an all-season tyre, you don't actually ever need to swap tyres when winter comes anyway, because they seem to work all year round. Even better, if your car's got the bigger option wheels as standard, why not just sell them, get the money back, go and buy some smaller wheels and tyres, and then you'll get a more efficient car and cash back as well. Okay, tip number five also relates to tyres and that is to consider buying a low rolling resistance efficiency tyre if you have to buy some new tyres. Obviously it wouldn't make sense to go out and buy some just to save fuel because they are quite expensive, but if you need some new ones, take an interest in how the EU rates it for rolling resistance. This EU tyre label is a bit out of date, but it's still very similar today. Here we have a picture of a fuel pump and a tyre, and the grading there tells you how efficient that tyre is, how much rolling resistance it creates. So this Goodyear efficient grip performance is a B, which is pretty good. Now one little caveat is that if you're buying tyres for a performance car, it's probably a good idea to steer clear of efficiency tyres because they're efficient, but the grip levels are not as good as a normal performance tyre. But if you're buying a performance tyre, still take an interest in how the EU rate it for rolling resistance because you might find one very good performance tyre is much better than another when it comes to that and you'll see savings in fuel. Okay, on to number four then. And this tip is very simple, but also very effective. And it's to think very carefully when you use the car's air conditioning system. This is particularly important with smaller engine cars, let's say the Volkswagen up, because the air conditioning pump will take up more of the engine's output than it would on a bigger engine car. But every car will be more efficient with their air conditioning turned off. There is one word of warning and that is that there are seals in the air conditioning system that are lubricated when the system is in use. So if you switch it off for a very long period of time, you might find those seals dry up and there is a leak and it will cost you much more to fix that than you will have saved in fuel so just use it regularly it's very easy to turn it off even on a mark 8 believe it or not there we go ac off on other cars like mark 7 7.5 there'll be an ac off button on some older cars you might find an econ button which is basically aircon off it says econ because the car is more economical without it running at number three my top tip is to not drive with your windows or sunroof open because this creates a lot more drag and uses more fuel. It's also not very good for your haircut. Oh, that's better. So if you are a bit hot while you're driving, then it's probably better if you've got air conditioning to use that. It's important to stay Alert when you're driving and air conditioning is pretty crucial for that, so don't go compromising your safety by not using the air conditioner or opening the windows. Um, but yeah, I think aircon is the most efficient way of staying cool. Tip number two is one that can benefit a lot of people very, very easily, and that's to check your tyre pressures on a regular basis. I check a lot of tyres and I'd say 95% of them are underinflated, and that's bad because the tyre wears out more quickly, the car's not as nice to drive, but because there's too much tyre on the road, you use more fuel. Another little tip is that some more modern cars have got actually three settings. They've got a normal setting, they've got a fully laden setting, and in between there's an eco setting, and that means that you can put a bit more pressure in to take a bit of tyre off the road. It might give you a little bit more of a harsh ride and a bit less wet grip, but it gives you more efficiency this Skoda has actually got that so the difference between them is 2.2 and 2.5 so 0.3 of a bar more and you can save fuel you can also experiment with other cars you don't have to stick to the manufacturer's recommended rating don't go crazy but a few extra psi if the ride isn't ruined by that won't do any harm and you'll see 
a noticeable improvement in fuel consumption. Okay, at number one, the top tip for saving fuel is to adapt your driving style. By that, I mean to think ahead more, to anticipate what's coming. Don't just come off the throttle onto the brake every time you have to slow down. If you want to be a really efficient driver, you need to spend as long as possible not actually touching the throttle or the brakes. So in about a quarter of a mile, I know a roundabout is coming. I'm off the gas, the car's slowing down by itself. It's actually disengaged the clutch and the revs are sitting at idle because it's, it's gone into coasting mode. Even in drive on this Mark H GTI, it will do that. And while some people don't like that, the effects on your MPG is massive. Also, if you're stationary, use the start-stop system. I know a lot of people disable that, but it makes a massive impact on your MPG if you get stuck in traffic. Obviously, sometimes it's a bit annoying when it switches off just when you want to pull away, but you can turn it on and off as you wish. Um, but when you are stationary for a long time, say at traffic lights, it has a massive effect on the MPG. Now, unfortunately, it's not actually legal to coast in a manual car. It's not recommended in the highway code anyway, and that's because they say your brakes and your steering may not work correctly if you're doing that. Um, but in the modern automatic, it just does it. And even my Porsche Boxster, if I pull the right-hand paddle back, the revs, as long as I'm not in sport mode, will just go to idle and you can feel it just coasting along. So I hope you've enjoyed these top 10 tips for saving fuel, very topical at the moment with the average unleaded cost, I think about £1.60 a litre. If you have enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Please do comment, please do share, please do subscribe. Let's get to 40k very soon and I'll see you for the next one very soon. Well guys, I didn't set out today trying to break any MPG records. I was just trying to film the bits for this video, but by abiding by my own tips, I've actually smashed through the 50 miles per gallon barrier in this car on my commute to work. So the trip computer says 38 miles, because I had to go to a petrol station, drop a parcel off, 54 minutes driving, 43 miles per hour average, and an amazing 51.6 miles to the gallon out of my 300 horsepower Mark 8 Golf GTI Club Sport. That's just unbelievable.